What's going on there everybody? Welcome back to the Art Shack. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you uh, probably my favorite part of this drawing. Uh, it's the mist layer beneath the mountains. Uh, and I know uh, part of the main video, uh, the majority of the comments had to do with, you know, how did you uh, pull off the, the mist there? Um, you know, and to be honest with that drawing, it really wasn't planned out. A lot of the drawing was just kind of on the spot. Uh, sort of doing stuff and uh, I know doing stuff is probably a bad way to, to put it but yeah, it just it just ended up happening you know it I, I, it wasn't planned it just uh, the way th things uh, you know turned out and uh, I find that you know stuff like that tends to surprise me you know because I, I, I go in it without really a solid or steady plan and uh, before I know it you know I'm, I come out with uh, just something that's really uh, you know, different and unique, and it just so happens that you know, I, I think maybe one one of the main reasons why that video did you know as well as it did, and you know, which was a surprise, but you know that was probably one, you know one of my favorite drawings that I've done, and that's why I'm doing it again here. Um, so in the last video, I ended it with blending out the bombs of these mountains like I have here. Actually, let me zoom in more. That's what I was gonna do. And I'll come in quite a bit because it's going to be uh, a lot of fine detail that goes in here. So I did this uh, blending layer here and I can carry this even lower. Doesn't you know have to go all the way down but it'll just make it easier. Now depending upon how this video goes, um, I might cover I'm not sure if I'll get to the trees or not. Uh, just because those tend to take quite a bit of time with layering. There's a lot of layers with those trees that I add in. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but anyway, this video is, is mainly going to be focused around the mist regardless. So uh, that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Uh, the majority of what this is going to be about anyway. So um, with this mist layer, I'm going to start out with a, a kneaded eraser. I'm going to try holding that angle so that way you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. And uh, same thing with the clouds. I just kind of want to start making some rough shapes. And you know, towards the uh, the base of the mountains here, I had the, the mist kind of starting to rise up a bit. Something like this. I ha especially in, in the, the ridges of these mountains here. I have it sort of just kind of traveling up, you know, doing its own thing. So, I mean, I'm not really committing to anything. I'm just uh, trying to work out um, different areas and just kind of seeing what looks nice. And But the main thing is you don't want to erase <laughs> the whole area out. Uh, that would definitely de defeat the purpose of uh, trying to make clouds. You definitely want to have a lot of the shadow still left in. And to be honest, I'll probably add in more shadow just to kind of make these pop more. Because um, I have the reference right in front of me here, the original drawing which I'm using just to kind of see what I did myself, you know, um, I don't exactly remember, you know, every detail that I've done to it. Uh, I, I remember the, the vast majority of it, but just seeing it helps me to remember everything that I did. And even over here, I really carried some, some of that. And with the needed eraser, I'm not uh, doing any fine detail work at all. I'm just kind of doing rough work with it. Uh, I'll be using the um, this one, the Tough Stuff eraser stick to add in fine details. That's definitely that eraser. I, I don't know how many times I've uh, like mentioned it within a video. I probably quite a few now, but definitely it's um, one of the best erasers I've ever used. Uh, I haven't seen too many like it. Uh, there are other like mechanical like erasers around but nothing to the capacity of what that thing can do. The erasers that are used to refill it are also pretty good. They work really well. I've seen other um, mechanical erasers around, but um, they're usually much thicker, you know, more to the style that would be on the back of like a, a yellow pencil, such as this. Uh, the eraser would be that thick, which uh, you can get pretty good details with, but uh, the problem with these erasers is that they'll dry out relatively quickly and it'll uh, usually um, make marks on your paper that you can't get rid of. 
So you just want to be careful with those erasers, especially when they've been sitting around for a while. They sit with the oxygen and they really start to harden up. You know, they can really mess with your drawings, which I, you know, I used to have issues with way back when. So you just want to be careful with those. That's why I usually stick with the, the white erasers. Uh, they typically are much better. Uh, they withstand a lot longer. Because even the uh, the pink pearl ones can sometimes uh, get a little funky on you. So you just want to be careful. It's always a good idea to test your erasers on a scrap sheet of paper just to make sure that everything is working properly. That's something I always recommend. You always want to make sure something is going to do what it's meant to do before you do it on something that you uh, are really trying to make look nice. You know, that way there's no unexpected uh, mistakes or something that would, you know, basically ruin what you have basically done. Uh, I'm just sharpening up some of the pencils that I have here. I was working on another drawing. Uh, I've been doing a few live hangouts here and there. And uh, I haven't sharpened my pencils really since I uh, worked on that drawing, so I'm just making sure everything's good to go here. It's always good to have a pencil sharpener on hand. Okay, so I have the basic um, eraser uh, lines that I that have, you know, that I want here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm using a 2B pencil, and I'm just going to lightly, you know, I don't want to press very hard, and I'm using the pencil on its side. Uh, anywhere that I didn't erase out, I'm going to take this pencil and add in more shadow. This is going to really help to make the mist layer pop. And just having that contrast between light and dark will really make them stand out. That's one of the big things with uh, pencil drawing. You know, you don't have color to make objects stand out. You have contrast between light and dark to make objects stand out. So it really sort of makes you think twice about where you add your highlights and your shadows. I mean, well, highlights and shadows kind of go where they need to go regardless, but the placement of objects, at least. Yeah, especially like if you look at the sky, you know, these, you can tell the difference. I have a lot more highlight over here on this mountain, and this is very dark, so that's a pretty good contrast so that really stands out. And down over here, I mean, this area is pretty light, but this area over here is dark. And it gets pretty dark some over here as well, so there's a pretty nice contrast there. So, um, same here. This area is darker, and this area is very light, so there's a lot of contrast there. Uh, actually, I was pointing up here on this mountain, but you probably couldn't see it. I just noticed where my camera is. But even right here, uh, where this it's really dark here, and it's a pretty stark difference between these two shades, so you can really tell the difference. That's one thing I really had trouble with when uh, I was younger when drawing. Everything that I tend to to do, it just didn't stand out. You know, there wasn't that really uh, dark contrast between objects. And over time, I've uh, kind of discovered how to, you know, how different things worked out. And that, and you know, quite a bit of practice. It's one of the things. And you know, it just takes time, like anything. Now, one of the biggest things I, I tend to relate it to is, you know, how many years, or no, not many years, but it, it took mainly a year to to learn how to walk. But at the same time, how many years does, does it take to learn the English language, especially for someone who is not a uh, an English speaker? You know, if they speak, uh, you know, some, you know, something other than English, to uh, adopt and learn um, word for word the entire English language, learn how to write and everything. That's, I mean, unless you're really on an accelerated program, it's going to take you years to learn that. And uh, I think a lot of people kind of tend to lose grasp of how long something takes to, to learn to do, you know, um, especially something as complicated as learning a whole new language. And uh, I think uh, learning how to draw in art is uh, probably, uh, it warrants like the same amount of time and practice you know, not to, to to deter anyone from learning how to draw. It's definitely uh, has its rewards and its perks. Definitely, absolutely. Um, I I would probably you know I would keep drawing no matter what. It's just it's it's very re rewarding. It's you know it's a fun hobby to do. It passes the time, but uh, it's just it's a lot of fun. So I I enjoy it a lot, and uh, I've been uh, I've been doing it for quite a long time. But uh, it, it does take quite a lot of practice to do so. 
just keep that in mind you know because I know a lot of the comments that I end up getting are about you know how how long does it take you to get to like where you are you know in your skill set but um it's kind of a subjective answer um you know I'll tell you that it took me maybe five six seven years or so I mean I've been drawing since uh um late middle school so gosh that was back when I was like 11 or 12 so actually no more like 10 10 years or so about you know but you know it's been on and off on and off and um but don't forget I mean the, it may not take someone else the same amount of time it depends on how, you know their learning style if you know if you draw for a month give it up for three months draw again for a week stop for f- four months pick it up for you know draw two images and then drop it again for a year it's going to take you 10 years to learn how to draw and that's basically how i was i would get into these um grooves i guess you could say just to draw and i would do it constantly for you know just a small amount of time and then just drop it completely for a while and you know there's no reason why it's just uh other things come up you know work school things like that and you just kind of forget about it but one of the beauties of youtube is that you kind of never forget that you have to to draw you know because you have to make videos so that's one reason why i like youtube it gives me it gives me a reason to kind of keep going because sometimes you know i mean you gotta be honest that sometimes you you kind of get bored with it you want to do other things and things like that so i mean it's totally fun everyone's like that you always want to try new things so but uh like i was saying it it all depends on how you learn if you are if you draw every day for a couple years you're going to end up being really good i'll tell you right now so it all depends on your pace of learning if you take it slow it's going to take you longer if it, if you're really really quick and pick things up really easy and you constantly keep moving through and advancing you're going to really go through really quickly so it's always different for person to person all right so i'll get back to uh talking about the drawing a little bit now that i've advanced a little bit so what i've done was uh, taken the 2b pencil and uh, lightly shaded in and around the area here and now i'm just blending it out just so that uh, I can get a nice smooth transition from uh, light to dark here. And then uh, I'll eventually go back in again. But I'm going to do something else as soon as I get the rest of this kind of shaded out. I'm not going to do much over here at all. I don't want to draw too much attention over there. Uh, the only attention I want to have over here is the trees. So I'm just going to kind of leave everything uh, as is over here. So even though I've erased out a lot of areas... I'm going to take the, the blending stump and just lightly, very lightly go back in. Just a little bit. Just want to add a little bit of shadow back in again. That way when you erase, uh, it'll kind of make subtle details here and there. It'll just kind of make it look nice. Because basically all I'm going to be working on is like the outer edges of these areas that I erased out. Just to kind of make details in. Something like that. Alright, so here's like the basic framework for making clouds I and mean, it's gonna be very similar to how i did these clouds but a bit more uh detailed i guess you can say because these clouds are going to be kind of interlocking and weaving and, and such so and uh <laughs> you can do this all day but eventually i'm gonna have to pick up the eraser and start doing the clouds so i'm just gonna erase a little bit or not erase i'm just gonna blend this a little bit more and I'm going to put the blending stuff down eventually you gotta move on otherwise this video will be three hours long <laughs> alright so um, if you don't have this type of eraser uh, you can give it a shot with the end of a pencil like this but make sure that the eraser works on something else first before you try it on this because if this thing is all dried up and, and you know doesn't work right you're gonna be kicking yourself for a week <laughs> if you ruin your drawing um, one of these probably would work but again try it and any other fine tipped eraser um, the white ones tend to work uh, significantly better they uh, don't dry out as much and that's what I found over the, the years um, but if you have 
if you have managed to find one of these, you know, my, my uh, logo is, is uh, since uh, pretty much been completely washed off, but it's made by Paper Mate. It's a Tough Stuff Eraser Stick. I'd probably be able to read it there. Um, it's by far the best eraser. You know, you can, it's a, like a mechanical pencil, but with an eraser in it. All right, so with this one, uh, I'm going to go back into the edges of where I made those highlights and just kind of go in a, in a circular type motion and kind of try and bring out some of those areas that I uh, erased out. And you don't want to overdo it, you just kind of want to go in back in a little bit like this. I just kind of want to play around with things and you know make highlights here and there. That's one of the main things with um, going back in with the blending stump and just kind of adding a bit of shadow back in. Uh, you want to add in uh, highlights here and there that way the areas that you naturally made darker will you know adopt the uh, role of a shadow so that way the amount of work you have to put in is, is much uh, less so it makes it a lot easier just one of the you know the many tricks that I've kind of discovered over the amount of time that I've been drawing and whatnot so that makes it fun and then it's always handy to keep a, a paintbrush of some degree nearby just to uh, kind of brush away those eraser shavings because you're going to have quite a bit. This is one of my favorite things to do with an eraser, you know, not to erase mistakes, but to create more. You know, it's like it's basically negative drawing. You're using something that's used to create mistakes to actually create more detail. So it's an interesting concept. So the, the clouds over, or the mist over here is, it's, you know, moving in an upward type motion, something like this. And then a lot of this, you know, the clouds down here, or I keep saying clouds, it's mist, man, it's mist, um, are kind of moving uh, horizontal side to side. You're going to need to keep that uh, paintbrush handy. You're going to need it quite a bit, I'm telling you. Now one thing I'm noticing is that, you know, around like this area here, what you can do is you can lightly add in more detail to the mountain around where your clouds are kind of, you know, towards the tops. That way they'll have a bit more contrast. And then you can kind of erase a little bit more around it, just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. You know, just different things you can do. Just remember the contrast is what enables you to be able to define between one object and the next. And then, you know, every once in a while you're going to want to go back into the blending stump, you know, especially one that's as dark as this one, and kind of go back in and darken up uh, areas here and there within the mist layer. See, I said it right that time. I called it mist. <laughs> so, um, kind of want to go back in and uh, kind of darken up areas here and there. But, you know, don't go too crazy because, at, you know, at the same time you're going to have to erase again just to kind of break it back to where it was. And you're just going to be in a never-ending uh, battle you know, lightening and darkening different areas. So, I mean, you can do this for, like I said, you could do it for hours. So, but, uh, you, you know, a lot of people have other things that they want to do in the day. So working on one thing for hours probably isn't ideal for, um, you know, a lot of different people. So, but you never know. <clears throat> I'm just going to take the uh, kneaded eraser here and just kind of lighten up this area just a little bit. Now just keep in mind too, you don't have to like follow what I'm doing, you know, line for line. You can if you want, but if you, you know, want to add something a little bit different, it's absolutely up to you. Just keep that in mind. You know, because I know there's, there's some people that, um, you know, with, with wanting to draw, uh, there's usually something, you know, one thing or another that you're curious to see what it would look like if you did this or if you did that. So <laughs> you may not have to be curious. You know, you can just give it a shot and see how it does. Because you never know how things will turn out. Uh, I think I'm going to bring down this. Uh, I almost said cloud <laughs> with this mist here. I'm going to add in some of the detail back into this mountain here. 
just gonna bring it down a little bit it's going up a little too high and it's distracting me a bit just something like that let me keep that paintbrush handy you're gonna need it a lot all right and just to add in some clouds over. <laughs> See, I said clouds again. I'm just so used to calling it clouds. I don't know why. Uh, hopefully, it'll give you guys a bit of a chuckle you know, along the way. A little bit of a laugh. It's all good. All right. So the only thing with them, with this thing that I can kind of say that it doesn't always work in favor for is that it makes a lot of sharp details, which missed which mist and clouds alike don't usually tend to have. So it's, that, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I kind of go back in with the bigger eraser and the blending stump just to kind of soften those uh, sharper eraser marks that uh, that thing makes. Just to kind of soften things up a bit. Yeah, especially up here, because this area is not really working for me just about yet. I'm constantly looking back at my reference image. And again, I'll uh, include the the reference image that I'm using uh, within the description of this video, so that way uh, you all can see it as well and follow along with what I'm doing here, just to kind of help uh, reinforce with what I'm doing here. What I'm also gonna do is sort of blend out the bottom of the mountains a little bit more above the cloud layer just because there's a lot of texture in in the mist so I said cloud layer again geez uh, I'm never gonna get this right I'm sorry <laughs> but I'm gonna blend above the mist layer just to kind of get rid of the details a little bit that way the the mist will show up more it'll have a you know a bit more of a contrast to show up against because that's one of the things I'm noticing is I'm not really seeing too much of the uh, the mist <laughs> so much I'll have to make sure I'll probably have to go back in this video and like do some sort of counter of how many times I pronounce or not pronounce but say things wrong or or you know say the wrong things <laughs> I probably won't do that it would be funny though. Anything to make the videos a bit more entertaining. That looks a lot better. You know, now you can really see the mist <laughs> quite a bit more. So I'm gonna try not to call them clouds anymore, but we'll see how long that lasts. So now, now these are starting to really uh, come along. So I'm just gonna go back in with the blending stump a little bit and add a bit more detail to the mist <laughs> just so that they'll uh, have a bit more highlight and shadow going on in here so they're still not really um, looking too much like mist <laughs> just yet. You see now I'm gonna over say the word mist now I can never win right? like that. I'm going to actually go back in with the uh, the kneaded eraser again. Just kind of shape this thing up a little bit. And just kind of do what I did for the clouds and do it in for the mist. What I would push and sort of twist. I know you can't really see what I'm doing when I'm doing this, but all I'm doing is I'm pushing in uh, at the tops of these uh, the mist layers uh, same with the clouds. I, I go towards the, the edges of them on the tops, kind of push and twist a little bit. I'm not doing as much here, but that's essentially you know, what I'm doing, just to kind of make them look a little bit more wispy and, and such. So yeah, I mean, it's starting to come along. Um, when I add in the tree layer on the bottom here, it'll really start to show through. What do I need? I need this. 
need the eraser. But you can literally just sit here for uh, an hour, you know, easily just working on this alone. I mean, I remember one of my, uh, I mean, it, uh, there was a time where it was a while that I had drawn and I drew like a simple mountain landscape, which I ended up drawing again and ended up creating my first uh, tutorial uh, on, on this channel. If you go all the way back to like the first video I have, that's what it is. It's, uh, it's like that mountain landscape that I did over again. But anyway, that uh, initial landscape that I did, not the tutorial one, but the one I did before that, um, it's uh, you know it's a pretty simple concept. It's got a, pr a pretty good amount of detail in it, but it took me like eight hours to draw it, just because I haven't drawn in so long. So I mean, it's just kind of amazing how uh, something can take you so long. I mean, just, I mean, just because you're unfamiliar with it, you, you know, you're just taking it slow, taking your time. But as you do it more and more, you kind of you, know, you have the ability to do it quicker and quicker. It doesn't take you as long. I mean, you, you kind of get the idea of what you're doing, and you learn shortcuts here and there. So you just kind of get naturally better at it over time. And like I said, it's you know it's like learning how to speak English. It's it takes time. I mean, could you imagine me trying to learn another language? It would take me years to learn how to do it. And then you know you learn how to speak to other people and everything. Just it just it's a lot of time you gotta take to do it. So it's the same thing with this. Just gotta take time. I don't know if it'll take as much time to learn another language fluently, but it'll definitely take time. That's that I can tell you. But it's definitely something that worth learning how to do. Is that you know every time I turn on that camera and start recording, I have fun doing it. I also really enjoy doing the hangouts as well. I should uh, try doing those a bit more here and there, but it's it's always better a better experience to do them with others. Uh, just so that there's never a dull moment within the hangout, and then you can always uh, the conversations always uh, really carry through to you know different topics here and there, and then the audience interaction. It really makes for a good time. I don't know how often I'll uh, be able to do those, but yeah, we'll see. I'll take on the opportunities as they arise. This is starting to look pretty good. I'm, you know, it, it just takes a little bit of work, a little bit of uh, persistence as well, and uh, things just start to come out and, and turn through. I probably mentioned this before, but I took a, a painting class once, and the instructor, the way he said it was funny. I don't remember exactly how he said it. He always said, you know, uh, when I started a painting, he didn't say it looked horrible, but it didn't look that great. <laughs> and then whenever I finished it, it always somehow just really turned out well. It's like a, something along the lines of, I don't know how you, you take a painting that doesn't really look that great and all of a sudden make it look really good uh it, it's always funny how i said that so but you know it's it's kind of the same thing here it's it's that's what i like about um drawing something even though you're drawing from reference or your, your imagination or whatever you never really know how the final image is going to turn out so there's always a bit of a surprise at the end at least for me you know, every time i do something it turns out a little bit differently because this mist is a bit different than that one but uh, I'm finding that this time it's a bit more dynamic than mist, which uh, I'm kind of liking. So, you know, it turns out a bit different for better or for worse. It's just an experience. What am I up to? Almost 30 minutes already. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave this one with the mist layer. I, I don't want to um, have, you know, an hour long video. <clears throat> on you know that's covering multiple topics I'll, I'll keep it simple you know broken down to many different topics uh, I think I mentioned this in the first one you know that way anyone can kind of come in and get what they need and uh, go about you know with whatever they're doing with their projects or or you know they're, they're just curious on how to do different things
but uh, I'm getting pretty close to calling the mist layer, or, you know, calling it the right this time. I don't know how many times I called it cloud layer without realizing that I said it wrong, but the mist layer. Um, I'm getting pretty close to calling this one pretty much done here. Um, like I said before, I'm not going to do too much over here because I'm going to have these trees coming down over here and I don't want to have too much uh, detail in there uh, just because it'll be just, you know distracting and it'll be competing with the trees. So I'm just going to eliminate that factor completely and just, you know, not do that. So I can literally... Uh, keep doing the, these I was about to call them clouds but I can literally keep doing the mist all day but I think I'm at a pretty good point in this and I hopefully that you'll agree so uh, I'm going to end it here I want to thank you all very much for watching uh, if you enjoyed this one please give me a thumbs up it really helps out and I will see you all later take care